A Brief History of the Empire, Part 1, by Strongth Kanji III, Imperial Historian. Before the rule of Tiber Septum, all Tamriel was chaos. The poet, Tracy's, called that period of continuous unrest days and nights of blood and venom. The kings were a petty lot of grasping tyrants who fought Tiber's attempts to bring order to the land. But they were as disorganized as they were dissolute, and the strong hand of Septim brought peace forcibly to Tamriel. The year was 2E896. The following year, the emperor declared the beginning of a new era. Thus began the third era, year Ot. For 38 years, the emperor Tiber reigned supreme. It was a lawful, pious, and glorious age, when justice was known to one and all, from serf to sovereign. On Tiber's death, it reigned for an entire fortnight as if the land of Tamriel itself was weeping. The emperor's grandson, Pelagius, came to the throne. Though his reign was short, he Though his reign was short, he was as strong and resolute as his father had been, and Tamriel could have enjoyed a continuation of the Golden Age. Alas, an unknown enemy of the Septim family hired that accursed organization of cutthroats, the Dark Brotherhood, to kill the Emperor Pelagius I as he knelt at prayer in the Temple of the One in the Imperial City. Pelagius I's reign lasted less than three years. Pelagius had no living children, so the crown imperial passed to his first cousin, the daughter of Tiber's brother Angnorth. Kintira, former queen of Sylvanar, assumed the throne as Kintira I. Her reign was blessed with prosperity and good harvests, and she herself was an avid patroness of arts, music, and dance. Kintira's son was crowned after her death, the first emperor of Tamriel to use the imperial name Uriel. Uriel I was a great lawmaker of the Septim dynasty and a promoter of independent organizations and guilds. Under his kind but firm hand, the Fighters Guild and the Mages Guild increased in prominence through Tamriel. His son and successor, Uriel II, reigned for 18 years, from the death of Uriel I in 3E64 to Pelagius II's ascension in 3E82. Tragically, the rule of Uriel II was cursed with blights, plagues, and insurrections. The tenderness that he inherited from his father did not serve Tamriel well, and little justice was done. Pelagius II inherited not only the throne from his father, but the debt from the latter's poor financial and judicial management. Pelagius dismissed all of the Elder Council and allowed only those willing to pay great sums to resume their seats. He encouraged similar acts among his vassals, the kings of Tamriel, and by the end of his 17-year reign, Tamriel had returned to prosperity. His critics, however, have suggested that any advisor possessed of wisdom but not of gold had been similarly ousted by Pelagius. This may have led to some of the troubles his son, Antiochus, faced when he in turn became emperor. Antiochus was certainly one of the more flamboyant members of the usually austere Septim family. He had numerous mistresses and nearly as many wives, and was renowned for the grandeur of his dress and his high good humor. Unfortunately, his reign was rife with civil war, surpassing even that of his grandfather Uriel II. The War of the Isle in 3E110, 12 years after Antiochus assumed the throne, nearly took the province of Somerset Isle away from Tamriel. The united alliance of the kings of Somerset and Antiochus only managed to defeat King Orgum of the island kingdom of Pandonia due to a freak storm. Legend credits the Sigic Order of the Isle of Artium with the sorcery behind the Tempest. The story of Kintira II, heiress to her father Antiochus' throne, is certainly one of the saddest tales in imperial history. Her first cousin, Uriel, son of Queen Potema of Solitude, accused Kintira of being a bastard, alluding to the infamous decadence of the imperial city during her father's reign. When this accusation failed to stop her coronation, Uriel brought the support of several disgruntled kings of High Rock, Skyrim, and Morrowind, and with the Queen Potema's assistance, he coordinated three attacks on the Sumptum Empire. The first attack occurred in the Lilac Bay region, which separated High Rock and Hammerfell. 
Kintira's entourage was massacred and the Empress taken alive. For two years, Kintira II languished in an imperial prison believed to be somewhere in the Gellin Point or Glen Morrill before she was slain in her cell under mysterious circumstances. The second attack was on a series of imperial garrisons along the coastal Morrowind Islands. The Emperor's consort, Contin Eryx, fell defending the forts. The third and final attack was a siege of the Imperial City itself, occurring after the Elder Council had split up the army to attack the Western High Rock and Eastern Morrowind. The weakened government had little defense against Uriel's determined aggression, and capitulated for only a fortnight of resistance. Uriel took the throne that same evening and proclaimed himself Uriel III, Emperor of Tamriel. The year was 3E121. Thus began the War of the Red Diamond, described in Volume 2 of this series.